Okay, moving on to section B. So what do we have? We have 160 people. We are looking at the cumulative frequency diagram, blah, blah, blah. Find the median. Okay, how do we find median from a cumulative frequency diagram? You go to the highest frequency. I think we want the graph to be smaller. And then you, uh, for median, is 50% of that. So it's 80. And then you read the graph. So here, go down. So it should be 40. So the median is 40. For the number of employees that traveling time is within 15 minutes of the median. Within 15 minutes, so that's like uh, 40 take away 15 and 40 take away uh, at 15. That's what, 25 to 55. So we find the number of people that are between 25 to 55. 25 is like here, 55 is like here. So read the graph, what's that? Is that 19? I think that's 19, right, roughly here. And for 55, which is this, that's like, oh, that's not 19, that's 18. Because uh, each box is actually two people, right? Because this is already 20. So that is actually 142, I think. 142. So the number of employees in between is just 142 minus 18, which is what? 130, 124. Right? Then we have 10% of employees that spend more than K minutes traveling. So that's like the top 10%, right? Top 10%. So 10% of 160, total people 160 is like 16 of them. So you go to the top, go back down 16, that's like here, that's like here, All right? Because there's 10 people and then six more people. Then you read it, where, here. So that's like here. That's like 56, I think. So it's 56 minute. Okay. Yeah, just reading off the graph. Then we have a Boston Whisker. Again, should be the minimum. Lower quartile, medium, upper quartile, and maximum. So B, B is the maximum. What's the maximum minute? Uh, 70. So B is 70. A is the lower quartile, so lower quartile is 25% of everyone, 25% of 160 is 40, right, that's half half, right, so half and then half again. If you read off the graph, 40 is 33, I think, so A is 33. <clears throat> Interquartile range is upper quartile minus lower quartile. That's like 14. And then outlier. Remember the definition of outlier is anyone that is outside of the lower quartile and upper quartile by more than 1.5 inter quartile range. So it's 1.5 times uh, inter quartile range which is 14. That should be 21 because you add 0 0.5 or 14, so you add half of 14 to 14. Half of 14 is 7. 14 plus 7 is 21. So that's the, the, so the outline is anyone that is smaller than the lower quartile by more than 21 or bigger than the upper quartile by more than 21. So it's like here, 21, and then if you're outside that, you're outlier. And less than the lower quartile by 21, and then if you're here, you're the outlier. Question is only interested in the lower part, so that would be the lower quartile and then even smaller by 21, that's 12. So if all the people that are below 12 would be an outlier, that is too small. And uh, for the upper part here, that would be outliers that are too big. Okay, nice and easy. 
next question eight with a function f prime x that's the derivative okay also oh, in this paper we've seen both the derivative and the inverse i don't know why a lot of students mix them up i really don't know why uh so differentiate this should be easy right you drop the three here you drop the three three times one over three they cancel out so that's one and you take away one from the power so it's x squared plus 2x minus 15. the graph have some horizontal tangent at two points find them horizontal tangent means the tangent have gradient zero so we make the gradient zero the derivative is the gradient zero so we solve this should be easy you just uh, factorize this so x should be three well minus five or three so a is the smaller one so a is minus five b is three mm. we might need more space than this uh well sketch the graph of the der of the derivative the derivative is a quadratic should be easy to sketch. So quadratic. What do we know? We know the roots. We know the x-intercepts at three and minus five. And uh, it's open upward because the front is positive. So it's open upward. So it's roughly like this. I don't mean to use dotted line. There's something wrong with my Apple Pencil. Yeah, maybe it's time to get a new one. Okay, hence, explain why f is a local maximum at a. Oh, this is a, by the way. This is a, this is b. Okay, why is that a local maximum? You should memorize this from the first derivative test, the sine diagram. If the gradient go from positive to negative, that's a maximum. Okay, so that's why. So scenes f prime x change from being positive to negative at x equal to a. Okay, so that's a maximum. Obviously, the other one is a minimum. Second, find f prime prime of b. So we need a second derivative first. So we differentiate this again. Easy. So this is f prime prime f, uh, sorry, f prime prime x. Then we sum in b, b was three. That's like what, eight. Again, you should answer to say why this is a minimum. So this time they are forcing you to use the second derivative test, which you should know if the second derivative come out to be positive, then it is a minimum. Therefore you say f prime prime three, is positive therefore uh, x equal to b is a minimum or a local minimum all right still pretty straightforward okay it does feel to me that this specimen paper at least this paper one is on the easy side at least for now maybe question nine is incredibly difficult i don't know the normal to the graph at A and the tangent to the graph at B would intersect. Find them, okay? Okay, okay well, this part is a tiny bit tricky. It should be, I mean, the strategy should be simple. You find the equation of the normal, you find the equation of the tangent, and then you try to find the intersection of that two lines. Right, so the key is just how do you find them, okay? Now remember A itself is a maximum. A itself is a maximum. And B itself is a minimum of F. So if you think about it, F probably looks something like this. So at minus five, there is a maximum, right? Yeah, at three, there's a minimum. So there's a maximum. And then there's a minimum, something like this. So this is the minimum, this is the maximum. Okay? They actually want a tangent at the minimum point. Okay? Well, that's easy. That's just a horizontal line. 
right? They also want the normal and a maximum. Well, a normal is perpendicular to the tangent. The tangent at the maximum would be a horizontal line. What's perpendicular to that? Well, a vertical line, right? The intersection is here. So they just want this, okay? Well, it should be obvious what the x coordinate is. The x coordinate is just negative five. So p is just negative five, right? Because vertical line would, any point on the vertical line would have the same x. What about the y coordinate? Well, same reasoning, it should be easy, that the y coordinate is whatever the y coordinate of this minimum point is. Well, how do you find the y coordinate of this point? You just sub in your x to the original equation. So you simply sub in x to be 3. So f3. So this question is tricky in the sense that you don't have to do much. And you need to know that you don't need to do much. Otherwise, you waste all of the time. Uh, 3 cubes 27 divided by 3, that's 9, plus 2 squared 9, 15 times 3, 45 I think, plus 17. Oh, this paper, the numbers are there. in this paper are not the nicest thing you can have. What is this? 18, and then 18 plus 17 is what? 35? So this is minus 10. Okay, so Q is minus 10. All right, they share the same Y coordinate. All right. Okay, finally, one thing that is uh, kind of tricky for the paper. Okay, but I'm sure you understand now that I told you what to do. Okay, for the last question. Is the last question? Yeah, I think that's the last question. Is again a differentiation question, again on second derivative and maximum and stuff. Mm. This specimen doesn't look too realistic to me. <laughs> but uh, well, we'll do it. Find the derivative. Uh, we have some x over some x, so it should be obvious that we should use the quotient rule. Quotient rule again is in the formula book. Let me use exactly how they give it to you. To show you, so uh, for my book, what use uv? They will tell you that the derivative of uv will be v du dx minus u dv dx over v square. So let's do that. The top is u, the bottom is v. Well, the difficult thing of this question is you need to do chain rule within your quotient rule. So it's not the most easiest thing you can do, but we'll just do it. So let's start with v. So v is kx kx times du dx, so we differentiate this. So differentiate that, we need chain rule. Differentiate a one x, that's 1 over the thing inside, and then times, differentiate the inside, differentiate 5x is 5. Okay, if you have trouble following this, full course is in the description. Minus u, a one 5x dv dx, so differentiate kx, k is a number, so differentiate k, uh, differentiate number x, you get the number, okay, divided by uh, v square, so it's kx whole square, so it's k square x square. Okay, let's see what we can do, this 5, cancel this 5, this x, we cancel this x, so we have k minus k, l and 5x over k square x square. We can factor out the k in the numerator. So it's k1 minus ln 5x, k square x square. Then one of the k cancel. So we get 1 minus log 5x over k x square. One of the k can cancel. So that's that. Okay. That's slightly bit complicated. Well, that's why they give you the answer. So we can use this to do part B, even if you forgot your quotient rule. Uh, the graph have one maximum, find it. Well, how do you find maximum? You make your first derivative equal to zero. So let's do that. 
give it zero. The bottom would multiply to the right and become zero anyway. Then we move the ln to the right. This is where you need to know a little bit of your log. ln is space e. So the definition of log, this is the meaning of log, e to the power of 1 would give you 5x. So e to the power of 1 is 5x. e to the power of 1 is just e. So x is e over 5. Okay, that's the x coordinate of your maximum point. So that's that. Second derivative, okay. This time they just give it to you. They don't want you to uh, do it again. Oh, but if you have to do it again, you'll do uh, another quotient rule, okay? May not be a bad exercise. Maybe you can try it, okay? You should get exactly this. Math paper don't lie. They won't give you a wrong answer to, you know, confuse you, no. Okay, find point of inflection. Point of inflection is found by second derivative equal to zero. So uh, it's really similar. The process is similar. This paper really feel too straightforward to me. I would highly doubt if the real thing is this easy. Again, it's e, so e to the power of this equal to five x. Because uh, in the old syllabus, the old SL map, it's not the easiest thing you can do. Okay. Which is what they want. Exactly what they want. Then uh, the region of F. There's a region of F. Oh. The region of F is bounded by... The maximum point and the point of inflection. Mm. What was P again? P was this. Q was this. So it's one fifth E to the power of three over two. They tell you that the area is three. They want you to find K. Okay, how would you find the area? You will integrate the function. What's the function? Which is this. ln 5x over kx. For kx. dx. From the lower bound to the upper bound. Equal to 3. Okay, maybe I was wrong. This is not easy. <laughs> this is not easy. Uh, this thing is not easy to integrate at all. Well, it should be obvious that this is not straightforward, meaning you need to use uh, substitution, integration by substitution. Yeah, you guys should give it a try. If you want, pause the video here. Give it a try. If you're just still just waiting and you need the hint, the hint is you let you I think to be ln 5x. I think that should work. Okay. Then you should try it. Okay, answer is coming. Three, two, one. How do you do substitution? You differentiate both sides. Again, I have a course on this. If you have zero idea what's going on, you need chain rule here, by the way. If you have zero idea what's going on, uh, check out the description box. Uh, differentiate the inside is five, so they cancel out. It's just one over five. You multiply dx to the other side. And you multiply x to this side, so dx is just x du, okay? Be careful. Uh, when you rearrange the stuff to make dx a subject, you didn't make a mistake. It is x du. And so we can sum it back in. Uh, so we change the limit. I mean, you don't have to, but let me show you. Let me show you how to change the limit. So when x is e over 5, that's the first limit, u would be ln 5 times e over 5. So 5 and 5 cancel out, so we just ln e, ln e is 1. So 
Okay, we should know this. While when x is the top limit, it's one fifth e. Yeah, I know it looked really complicated right now. So many steps going on. Uh, this is not an easy question at all. That's why you really should have a good foundation in, uh, in log, in integration, in finding area, doing definite integral to have a proper understanding of what's going on. Uh, the power go down, L and E is one, so U is three over two. Okay, so that's how you change the limit when you're doing a substitution with definite integral. Okay, a lot of terms. Okay, I hope you can still follow. So, we've changed the limit. The lower limit becomes 1. Upper limit becomes 3 over 2. Uh, LN 5x is now u over kx. dx is now x du. Alright, I hope you can follow. Put in the new limits, put in u, put in dx. Obviously, the key step of doing substitution is the fact that x should cancel out. This over k, k is a number, remember. Uh, you can take it out, coefficient you can take out. So you only have u to integrate, which is obviously u squared over 2. 3 over 2 to 1. Since we have changed the limit, we can just directly use those numbers. If you did not change the limit, you have to put u back in. So put this back in, and then use use the use the old limit. Okay. So there's two different ways of doing that. So one square over two. What's that? Three over two square is nine over four. Divide that by two. Well, actually, let's write it out. Two minus one square is one over two. Uh, what's that? 9 over 4 is 9 over 8. Sorry, 9 over 4 divided by 2 is 9 over 8. Minus 1 over 2. 1 over 2 is the same as 4 over 8. So this is 5 over 8. Okay. The question did tell you that in the answer should be 3 because the air is 3. So how do you get K, uh, you multiply K to the side, 5 over 8 equal to 3K, and then you divide the 3 under. So we have 5 over 8 divided by 3, that's 5 over 24. That's K. So, this is it. Paper 1, see you in paper 2, if you need it, or in one of those Udemy courses if you need it.